Okay, with this video I'm going to show you how to do a um, a butt joint on lead sheet. Okay, so what you do is on the one side of the, the butt sheet, what you're going to butt together, you need to clean half a centimeter, uh, five millimeters of lead. You can use um, a steel set square like we're using here with a universal shave hook. Um, when you're cleaning the lead, make sure that you don't keep cleaning the same piece so you're making the lead thinner. Just get the dirt off, yeah? So be very careful and just get the dirt off and don't keep scraping and scraping away, It'll make the lead thinner. So clean both sides and if you haven't cut the sheet um, and it's been standing in the stores, then make sure the edge is clean as well, that it's not oxidized. Okay, so when you've cleaned this, we're going to weld um, these sheets together using oxyacetylene equipment. Now you should set up the oxygen and acetylene bottles with 2 millibar on both. So 2 millibars on the oxygen bottle, 2 millibars on the acetylene bottle. Um, we'll be using a, two, a, a size 2 nozzle on our welding gun. Some people call it welding gun, some people call it a blowtorch, uh, some people call it lead welding, some people call it lead burning. Uh, all these terms are relevant. Um, so if you hear one or the other, it's both meaning the same thing. Right, I've cut these strips up before. Uh, the strips, when you're learning to lead weld, best to use 5mm strips. Um, just because when you're learning, uh, this is the ideal size. Uh, once you've learnt the technique, you can vary the size to suit yourself. But through my experience, I found that this is the ideal size uh, to learn lead welding. So it's a code 4 lead. That's the code we use for lead welding. Sometimes you would use a code 5, but it's very, very rarely. Um, that would mainly be in industrial, um, for industrial use. But in, in roof, roof uh, using lead on roofs, it's normally always code 4. So you make sure your strips are code 4 as well. Again, make sure the edges are clean as well. As you see, uh, I'll, I'll also check the edges, make sure there's no dirt or oxi oxidization on it. Uh, in lead, some, this oxidization is some kind, sometimes called patina. Um, that's normally on old lead, uh, where it's been on the roof for a few years. It goes uh, a very dark grey, almost black colour. And that's the effect the oxygen in the air has on the metal. That's why it's called oxidization. Okay, when you light your blowtorch up or your gun, um, start with the acetylene. And what you need is about two to three inches just to get you started. If you haven't got a tape measure handy, just gauge it by your fingers. So two to three fingers worth of acetylene. Okay, and then bring in your oxygen. As you bring in your oxygen, you see this feather appearing. Yeah. Now you keep increasing your oxygen until that feather goes down to a nice round tight ball, as you see in a second. There you go. Yeah, so there's no feather, it's a nice round tight ball. Now if you keep on increasing it, it'll go pointed. This means you've got too much oxygen, so decrease it until you get that ball again. Make sure your lead's flat on the on the surface while you're welding. Right now first I'm going to preheat the lead on both sides of the sheet where I'm going to weld. Yeah, as you see I'm preheating it. There you go, left and right, so it's a bit molten. Don't burn it right through that. And then I'm going to put a small amount of lead on there just to get me going, alright, and I'm going to make sure it's uh, the, s the size of the width of the weld I want and the height. Now the height of the weld should be roughly the thickness of the ledge you're welding, maybe just a little bit uh, smaller, so to give you your weld strength. Now as you notice, uh, I'm starting on the second bit of the weld. Um, you melt down 2 mil off your rod, to about 2 millimeters. there you go, you see that? And I'm melting it down onto the point where the last bit of weld solidified. And then I push it forward 2 mil when it's reached the width of the weld. There you go, this, this is a bit cold, this flame, so I'm going to stop now and I'm going to increase the um, increase the temperature of the, the gun. Yeah, so I'm going to increase it now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the acetylene and that will cause a feather. There you go, just a small amount, because yeah, I don't want it much hotter, I only want it a little bit hotter. And then I'm going to increase the oxygen so the feather goes away and I've got that round, nice, tight ball again. Now if you watch closely, you'll see it go pointed in a minute, where I put too much oxygen on it. 
there you go, see it, so now I'm going to decrease the oxygen, get that ball back again, there you go, nice round tight ball, that's what you want, and you see when you look at the weld, you've got that light grey colour with a dark grey edge to it, now this is a little bit hotter now, so that's a bit better, it's still slow, normally if I was welding, I would weld, uh, weld with a hotter flame, but I'm just cooling it right down so you can see what's going on, yeah, so I melt it down, I preheated the sheet by the way before I started, yeah, if you look back and check it again. So, see that dimple appear there when it solidifies? I melt down 2 mil off the rod onto that dimple. There it is. Melt it down onto it and then I wait until it's reached the width of the weld and I push it forward 2 mil. Dimple, wait, melt it down, push it forward. Wait, dimple, melt it down, push it forward. Dimple, melt the 2 mil off. Keep it there till it reaches the width of the weld, push it forward 2 mil. This is a sequence of events you've got to keep going over in your mind so you've got, got it off pat. Yeah, all the time, check your check your flame and check the colours, that everything's okay. Now every now and again you have to stop and tap the lead down because it will rise up through the heat. Now you see when I come back, first I'm preheating it again because I've stopped. Yeah, if you don't do this, you'll see where you started and stopped. Okay, and then I melt down where that dimple appears, where it solidifies, I melt down 2 mil off the rod keep it there till it reaches the width I want then I push it forward 2 mil to get my pattern yeah, it's important that you let that that cool off yeah, until it solidifies otherwise um, your weld will get flat because it, it's, it's too hot so everything will flatten out you won't get the strength in your weld by having the height yeah, another thing, look at the angle you see the gun I'm holding or the, or the welding torch I'm holding almost vertical yeah? you should be pointing slightly the direction you're welding so two to five degrees no more yeah, it should be almost vertical if you flatten it out and hold it flat flatter then what's going to happen is the, work, the, the molten metal is going to run away from the flame and, and run in the direction that you're pointing the flame and another thing that's very important is to get really in close if you watch that blue tip of the flame it's nearly in the molten metal so you're, you're welding one or two millimeters above that molten metal yeah Another thing to watch out for when you're welding is that that molten metal should look like a mirror. So you should be able to see the blue tip. You can't really see it clearly here, but when you're looking at it when you're welding, you'll see the reflection of the blue tip. Okay, so when you're finished, the best thing to clean the weld up with is hemp, because it's got a little bit of linseed oil in it, and it'll clean it up. The linseed oil won't hurt it if you have to go back and weld over it again. It, it, that's okay. So you can see how nice and clean it comes, just with a couple of rubs. And that's a butt weld. Okay, this is the back. This is what's called the root, and you need the root is penetration. 